Got something in the mail from Con Air. Let's see what we got. All right, we got two packages. A box within a box in a box. This is what it says on one of them. Screenshot that. What is this? Oh, snap. Okay, okay, okay. Ooh, this is tough. This is tough. I've seen it. I've seen, I seen all the influencers uh, repost this. This is the FX1 battery. Basically the battery charger. All right, all right, all right. And I guess one goes into the other. Into the other one goes into. The other one goes into the other of the other one goes in into the other one. All right, this is the charging charging cable. All right, so we already know what's in the other one, so let's just open this one up. Here's the other one. Like I said, um, one goes into the other one, goes into the other one, which was, I've seen it online, but I guess you pop this window open or something like over another. Oh, okay, you slide it up, slide it up, and then you slide it up, and then you take, and then you close it, and it reveals this little apartment right here, and then you just stick it in. You just stick it in, and it connects like that, all right? Now you got four batteries to charge. Hold on, let me let me see if I got four batteries to put in here. All right, so we got one, we got two, and we got three and four. Basically, you could charge all your uh, batteries in just one. All right, FX1, charge it in one. Batteries for the ones that you use to cut hair. All right, basically self-explanatory. This goes into here, then you plug it in charge it fx1 battery charger listen dennis appreciate you sending this over this is dope because i was getting tired of just charging one at a time now i get to charge like four at a time because i do have like four or five clippers from them so yeah shout out to uh babeless for this stay tuned So like I say, when cutting any type of waiver, what you want to do is comb the hair out first. That way, it lifts the hair off the scalp, making it easier for the hair to feed into the teeth of the blade. So before I started cutting my client's hair, I did the client consultation. I asked what my client want. He basically wanted a two on top and a three on the crown area. Now, as far as the taper goes, he let me, you know, do whatever I wanted to do on his uh, sides, but I went ahead and grabbed my instincts with the two guard with the lever open, and I'm just going with the grain of my client's pattern. I didn't want to take it all the way down to a two yet because I didn't want the definition to, uh, you know, the definition of his waves to go away. So. I always start off high and then you know work my way down but i actually left it with this too because i felt like it was perfect for his ways Next, I'm gonna work on that crown area. I'm gonna start by combing it out first, trying to uh, recognize the direction that his crown goes in before I just start diving in, cutting, all right? So I went ahead and grabbed my three guard um, and just, you know, taking it down to that length. <laughs> now starting on the taper, I'm gonna give my client a mid taper. I'm gonna set my bald line in and kind of a rainbow like shape um, using my Babless FX trimmers. When I'm setting this guideline in, I'm making sure that I'm neat as possible, all right? Um, how you setting your guidelines will affect how neat your blends turn out. 
So next, instead of diving in and setting in my guidelines, I'm basically gonna debulk. I'm using my one guard and I'm really going up about a full inch and using my comb to feed that hair into the teeth of the blades, making sure that the hair doesn't move. My idea of this is I'm not gonna go any higher than this. At least that's what I'm trying to do. I'm gonna blend down from here, making sure that I keep this blend as low as possible. Now with my lever open, I'm going up about half of that, all right? A half inch going up, making sure I still keep that rainbow-like shape as much as possible, all right? Although it's hard to see with my client's red hair, but I still go through the motions to set in my guidelines. Now switching over with the zero guard with the lever fully closed in a flick out motion, I'm attacking that middle line. Notice how I'm using my corners the entire time. I'm not using that full blade because you don't wanna accidentally make a mistake on that other side of the blade. Again, I'm still going through the motions. Um, sometimes that zero guard doesn't catch everything. So I come behind it with the lever open just to clean up that area. Now with the lever fully closed in a flick out motion, I'm flicking out that bottom line. I know, I know, it's hard to see, but I'm still going through the motions. I'm looking from side to side, um, trying to see as best as I can um, to take out that bottom line. Now, what you wanna do is start below the line, flick to the line, and adjust your lever as you go up. So now that I'm done blending downward, I'm able to see that the bulk on the top is not that deep. So I go with the two guard with the lever fully closed and go with the grain. Also, I'm coming back, going against the grain just slightly and scooping out, all right? I'm not trying to set it in a guideline. I'm just trying to soften up that bulk at the top. Now, lastly, what you wanna do is detail work. I'm detailing the top bulk. Um, detailing is extremely important, all right? I like to utilize the mirror. The mirror shows you a different perspective on the blend than just seeing it head on, all right? So if you don't have a mirror, also you wanna just kinda look away from the blend, come back to it, and just perfect the blend as much as possible. Use your corners in areas where you see bulk to debulk those areas. So as far as the back goes, I use the same exact steps that I did on the sides. Um, I wanna talk to you guys about the bulk that's on top, all right? So what I like to do is I like to basically debulk and then fade downward when it comes to waivers. That way you could keep all the waves as closest to the shoreline as possible, all right? When you do this, when you blend down from the bulk being up at the top, you'll realize that the top bulk isn't that bad, all right? And it's much easier for you to take it out um, by just kind of going with the grain or just kind of flicking at that top line. So don't get caught up in just trying to take out the bulk immediately. Um, sometimes you gotta just blend things down to realize like, hey, it's not that bad. Let me, let me, let me just take it out by scooping out and using the flick out motion as much as possible.
Listen, a real waiver knows what a waiver wants, all right? So that's why they come to me. They call me 360 Jeezy, because when I spin them in a chair, I spin them in a full 360, and they come out looking like... God did! You, too! This is the cut. And if you like it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. Also, Hustle Dreams Production, that's my brother. He does all my beats. His YouTube channel will be linked in the description below. Make sure you guys go give him a follow. Also, if you want to know where you can find any tools that you've seen in this video, links will be in the description below. Otherwise, you guys can follow me on Instagram and TikTok. My TikTok is official 360 Jeezy and my Instagram is 360 Jeezy. But it's your boy 360 Jeezy, and I'm out of here.